Salve a tutti, sono Riccardo Masini e qui... Well, wait a moment. Mm, let's see, maybe, maybe this video will be in English. Hello everybody, this is Riccardo Masini and this is vlog. Uh, this video in particular will be in English and will be a repeat of the previous video that has been uh, recorded in Italian. Uh, I will make this video in English because for two reasons. Uh, firstly, because there are many English-speaking friends, many international friends who who asked me to do some more videos in English. Um, so, here we are. Uh, and because it is a, a very important uh, argument, very important matter, subject, sorry, very important subject um, about which we will make uh, this episode today. Uh, this subject, uh, well, I've written about this subject in, uh, in my books, uh, in my books and articles on, on magazines about wargaming and history. Um, however, this subject in particular is, well, what is actually, what actually is a war game? Um, I started from a, from a reflection, from a, a thought in my head. When I see someone playing a role-playing game, or a neuro game, or a, a collectible card game, well, I instantly recognize, I can instantly recognize the type of game. However, there is no exact, no precise definition of what a war game is. I'd say, this one, it never snows. Here we are. It never snows. A traditional excellent counter game. All right, this is a war game. No doubts about that. Uh, very easy. However, let's just see. There is, well, in Italian it's Tapuma, but in English it's The Grizzled. Is The Grizzled a war game? There is no map, there are just cards, no dice no tables and no great maneuvers, it's just uh, the story of a bunch of friends that go to war and try to survive, but, well, it's about war. Also, Fort Santa, a very, a very nice and very successful game by GMT that was uh, recently published. Is this a war game? Or not. Well, there is no actual conflict uh, only here in the cover, but it is after the game. Uh, this is the bombardment of, of Fort Sumter. Is this a, a war game? Well, there is conflict, but it's just political conflict, uh, control of the territory. Of regions of power centers of the public opinion. Is this a war game? But most of all, well, far in the lake coin series. You or all of you know or should know this game. Coin series about Vietnam. Well, armed conflict, yes, but not just armed conflict, political struggle, cultural struggle diplomatic struggle. So, is this a war game? Are coin games war games? It is not. It is not so easy to understand it. It is not so easy to say some war game and say, well, Fire in the Lake is a war game. Others say, well, it is not a war game. There is no unit ID. There are no uh, particular representation of military reparations. Uh, territory is a vague concept, there are many other concepts, so this is not a war game. For something, not a war game, and the Grizzle, my god, should, I should never describe it as a war game, it is almost 
blasphemy for a war gamer. Mm. Well, it is a bit more complicated than that. And so, what really makes a game a war game? Well, I think I found three elements, three essential elements that should make a game a war game. Uh, to be a war game, a game must be about conflict, armed conflict, should, could be regular or not regular, military, not just military, however, conflict. Um, it should be, it should have mechanics, game mechanics that try to represent reality, uh, actual uh, dynamics of reality. So command and control, fire support, morale, supply, uh, close combat, um, fog of war, all of these things that happen in a real military situation should be in this game to be a war game. And the third element that should be uh, history. It should be about an historical conflict. Uh, so uh, we can draw an imaginary scheme, a diagram, um, with three main circles. Uh, we should have the conflict, the simulation and history. At the intersection at the center of all these three main groups, three main, three main elements, we should have a war game. If a game has all of these three elements, well, it's easy, it's a war game. Easy? Maybe not so easy, because I think and I'm not the only, only one to think it, that these three elements are much less precise than what they, than what they appear in theory. Uh, actually, conflict. There are many modern theories uh, that describe conflict in uh, an hybrid, in a hybrid way. Uh, it's not, not just armed, conflict but also economic conflict, also economy can be the uh, instrument of a conflict. Diplomacy, politics, culture, religion, there are all of these factors that make up a conflict. Another thing, simulation. Well, what is a simulation? Uh, we must, we should not have a um, too rigid and schematic um, image of simulation. Uh, simulation is not just X and counters. There are many other types of maps, of mechanics, bucket of dice. Uh, there are not just bucket dice and uh, combat ratio, the combat results table. Uh, there are block games like those from Colombia and others that have another way of describing fog of war. There are many mechanics about command and control. So simulation is, uh, there are not just two or three mechanics that can represent all of reality in all of the same way. Uh, the third element, history. Well, what is history? There are very good war games with good fantasy war games, science fiction war games, Rebellion, War of the Ring. They are very good war games, but they are about fantasy and science fiction. But also there are hypothetical war games. A game about Operation Sea Lion. Can we say it is not a war game because Operation Sea Lion never happened? It is not history, but it is possible history. Also, we must not forget that in every historical game, at the first move, the first turn, we are no longer in history territory. We are in plausible history territory, but we are no more recreating actual history. We will not play a game, it will not be a game. A game is about freedom, is about exploring alternatives, exploring different realities, plausible realities helped by a more flexible concept of 
simulation, not just the use of mechanics, the traditional, the traditional mechanics, but other mechanics as well, and with a more um, a wider idea of what conflict is. And so, in the end, with this wider idea of uh, conflict, of simulation, of history, uh, we just uh, release war game from the obligation of being just about armed conflict, just about uh, just using simulation, the same old simulation mechanics, and being just about a specific vision of history, what history is. Well, then, after all that, if we adopt a more um, flexible way of uh, uh, imagining what a war game is, we have a more flexible idea, a more flexible concept of what a war game is. Um, we have more freedom to play, to experiment with different types of war games, maybe about the same event. We may have about uh, World War I or Napoleonics or Ancients uh, or Antiquity, more traditional war games with more precise definition of uh, movements, combats uh, and uh, wars, uh, centered on the military aspect, or we can have uh, more political simulations, more cultural simulations. Uh, more flexible games. Uh, this idea, uh, I think, I think that is very important, uh, especially in the uh, current situation of war games, considering the more the more recent war games that all go in this same direc direction, using mechanics like cards, uh, like flexible sequence of turn, uh, flexible idea of, uh, of maps of movement in space and time, they represent, actually I think better representation, they are better representations of, uh, uh, of reality. They follow a more, a wider idea of a game that is closer to the original idea of what a war game should be. Original SPI war games, but not just the SPI, traditional war games in the 70s and first in the early 80s, well, tried to experiment. And one of the reasons of the current war game Renaissance for me is Renaissance. <laughs> for me is well, let's just say in it in Italian of the actual war game Rinascimento. Mm -hmm. It's easier for me. Uh, actually, is a, a wider and more flexible idea of what a war game is and should be a simulation in many possible ways of many possible ideas of conflict in many possible historical, non-historical, hypothetical scenarios. This is, as I said, uh, for me this is a very uh, important matter, an important subject that is actually, um, it inspires many uh, discussions. Um, so I hope that you um, that you want to discuss this this subject with me and with us and with the Italian followers of the channel of the blog channel here in the description in the in the sorry in the comments uh, here on YouTube I I can be reached through Twitter to Facebook uh, if you want even to email um, so I'd like to hear what you think about this important subject that actually what our game is and maybe what our game should be. Uh, so there's nothing more to this uh, 
uh, to this episode I, I say goodbye to you there will be I promise I promise I promise there will be more videos in English it's actually a bit hard for me to make them just for time constraint reasons but however there will be more videos in English and it's very nice for me to do them and I really 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 want to make them to hear what uh, the uh, English speaking and international war games for gamers think about uh, my ideas and about the ideas of Italian war games after all games are all about getting people together so there's no nothing more uh, here for this time this episode and this episode and here I say goodbye to you and as I say to my Italian followers non abbiate paura sono solo war games don't be scared it's just war games ciao